Well, we're on page four. So here is page three. I'm putting him down on a clean piece of white cardstock so he doesn't get dirty. And I immediately write top up here. So when I'm putting everything down, I remember this is the top. If you've ever put anything upside down, you know what I mean. <laughs> so we got this. These are going to be on um, page four and five are going to be mirror images of each other. So I'm going to build them together. First thing you're going to do, you are going to get two pieces, cut two pieces at nine inches tall by three and a half inches wide, and you're going to score a half an inch on three sides. So get two of those. Then you're going to cut your cardstock eight inches tall. This is for a flap, eight inches tall by four and a half inches wide, and you're going to score half an inch on the long side. So two of those. And lastly, you're going to cut two pieces at eight inches tall by six and a half inches wide and you're going to score a half an inch on the long side and this is going to form an inner flap so we have one each for each of our pages we'll start with the pockets so always remember when you're doing these because I need to be reminded this is where the hinge is going to be. So the, this is the hinge right here. So we are going to be putting our pockets here. So go, go ahead and fold and burnish those square lines. Same. I don't seem like I get that crooked. Okay. Now, one one crafter said something that I it always sticks with me. Once you've done your burnishing of your score lines, if you're making something, go on the outside on the top surface of it and just give it that sharp edge. So I like to do that. And then you're going to miter your corners. So you just go through that X on both sides there. And then I like to miter the top of my pockets. This this you don't have to do. I just like to do it. Uh, I gotta see, so go down. And this one will go down. So you have your pocket. So you need to dry fit it just to make sure it it does fit. And it does so I am going to be putting my score tape like I always do and I've already applied the pocket partially to this page five this is just this this was just a mock page five so this is the real page five so I here's my pocket Here's page four, here's page five, and I applied my pocket 
to this page, to page five. And remember, I always apply the, the long edge in the inside of the pocket after I apply it. I put my scotch tape there so you get that smooth inserting. You don't get caught on that lip. That's, that's real easy to get caught on. So that's what I do. If you don't like to do that or you don't want to do that, no problem. And then you just pull your score tape or or put some glue on and the pocket is done. So I am going to go ahead and apply my pocket to this side. Um, get my score tape and I'm going to apply it and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to put my scotch tape on here. And then you just pull your score tape on the sides. I just do, do one. And then go over to the other side. There. So we have both our pockets now applied to the inside. So next you are going to be getting your inside. Well, let's do your outer flap first. So we are going to attach this piece, eight inches by four and a half inches. Go ahead and score on the long side. Make sure this one's going over here. Good, okay. I like to miter my little corners on my flaps too, just because I think it helps with the designer paper. When you put it on, it does the, those little flaps don't show as much. But don't have to do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my score tape. Okay, I just had it working. Here it is. My score tape. And yes, I know I do not put my score tape on right. I cannot roll it the way everybody else seems to do. Okay, where is my cutter? Where, where, where? So, this page, page four, Five, I've already attached the flap. So on page four, the flap is going to go flush with the outside right here. So you're just going to um, place it flush to the pocket page and make sure it's all even. And I'm going to do that off camera because I put my head down, way right down here to make sure my corners are even and nobody wants to see the top of my head while I do that. So I'll be right back once I get this flap in. So this is page four. We have our pocket in. We have this outer four and a half inch, the smaller flap put that in. Here's this hinge right here. Oops, right there. Now, the way we're going to apply this, 
Now this actual design is from Daphne's Bird Watcher page four and five. Go watch her video. She explains this so much better than me. She does everything faster, simpler. I, I kind of go slow. But if, if what I'm showing you is confusing, watch Daphne's video, Bird Watcher, page four and five. And you will see, I'm just kind of following along with the way she did it. I do make some modifications at the end, but I don't add magnets the way she does. But watch it for the, the basic build of those pages if you have any problems with the way I do it. So now the way you're going to apply this is you are not going to lay it right on top of this hinge. Not going to do that. And that's just because it adds extra bulk. I believe that's what Daphne said for that. What you're going to do is you're going to turn it so this, this hinge is facing the panel right here. So it's going to be butted up against the panel right here. So the way Daphne explains to do that is you get it, you kind of butt it up to that hinge and then I like to make sure, got to make sure these two flaps, this outer flap, that these lines are straight and even. If not, go ahead and do whatever adjustments you need to do. Um, and then once you get it figured out where you are, once you close it, it's probably going to shift on you. So once you get it lined up with these flaps, top and bottom, you're going to open it and just push it in a little bit if it did shift. And then you are going to pull the tape and push it against this flap. And then turn it over. Watch Daphne, the way she does it, it's so much simpler. I already applied the other one. I was just afraid that if I closed it, that it would shift my hinge over a little bit. So I was real careful in going tap, 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 and then I went down. So you don't need to watch me doing that, but it, it's pretty straightforward. The other thing that I like to do is make sure this, this crease is sharp because this is going, this flap is going to be going on this page. So right like that. So you want everything sharp. You want this as sharp as you can get it because it's going right against that hinge. So like that, pull the tape and the flap will be in. So I'm gonna do mine and I'll be right back. So our flaps are all in place, so we have our outer littler flap, four inches wide. Then we have this bigger flap, and then we have our pockets in the center. So next thing you're going to do is you are going to go to your 8x8 eight eight collection. What you're going to do is you are going to cut this. This is eight inches. You're going to cut it right at four inches, right down the middle. And then you're going to have your two pieces like this. Okay. So we are going to have this side on the left on this page uh, four, and then we're going to have these birdies facing them on page five. Now, when you measure these, to to you know, you're going to have to do a little trimming with especially this page. Be oh so mindful. Be oh so mindful. You do not want to trim this side of the paper. 
we do not want to cut into the birds at all. So if you need to do some trimming, and it looks like I need a little bit of trimming here, you're going to do it from this end. If you need any trimming from the bottom, you're going to, any trimming, you know, from the top and bottom, you can only trim from the bottom. So trim only from here and the bottom to get this page fit. Now, same thing with this guy. Don't, this one, it doesn't matter as much. I mean, this one, I just didn't want the birds um, so close to the edge, but go ahead and trim from the edge here and the bottom to get it fit. Make sure, make sure you use your vintage photo or whatever distress, distress ink you're using to distress the edges because that's going to be real important. You just don't want that white showing all the way around. So go ahead, trim it to fit, being mindful of these birdies, not to trim this way, ink it, place it. I'm going to be using my score tape, so it'll take me forever, but you place them the way you want them, and then I'll be right back. I wanted to share a tip with you. you most of you probably already know this but I found, found it very useful. If you're, are cut, you're cutting a sliver, I mean a sliver, like right now I'm on this page, I am cutting, see, oh, where's my pen? See this little tick mark right here? That sh there's my tick mark right there. So I'm cutting a sliver off and I'm using this paper trimmer. So what you do is, you line it up, I mean, I line it up with my little groove right there. I'm actually going, yeah, that's, see, since I can't see and I don't want to put my head down, I'm going to have to pull this up there, put it there. I mean, it's a sliver. It's a sliver. So it's butted up against there. It is, make sure it's straight. When you put this down, you punch punch your um, blade into the paper. And you're always pushing up because when you push down, it can, it can drag the paper down. So I kind of push up and then I, I kind of go down a little bit because I want to get the end piece and then push all the way up. That way you've removed this little tiny sliver and you don't get any of those ratty edges. And it was a good tip for me, pushing up, put the blade into the paper before you cut and you'll avoid those ratty little um, slivers when you're cutting such a tiny piece. So be right back. So I'm ready to put these these panels in this this outer flap so this is just so I've got my score tape on so this is just to double check that you make sure on the left on page four your birds are facing this way and then on page five your birds are facing this way. So they are looking at each other. Page four and five are going to be looking at each other. So I'm going to do that and I'll see you on the flip. Well, hello. I wanted to do an update on these pages, pages four and five, because after I put them in the album and everything was in, um, I changed it just because what originally I had these two magnetic flaps right in the middle, right next to each other. So I had two large magnets right next to each other, which was okay. But then we had another large magnet right behind it. And it was just three big magnets all 
bulked right in the middle and that was causing problems. It was kind of getting bulky right in the middle there, so I didn't like that. So, and I, after I finished this, I realized I don't really need two packs of the 8x8 collection. Originally, I was given two packs, and I was thinking, you know, we don't really need them. We can get by with one pack, and it will be fine. So, when I was doing this, I was using both packs, and I wanted to show you how you do not need to use two packs of the 8x8. So I've already showed you to put some of the 8x8s aside because there's only two of them in one pack so you don't cut through them. Now with this piece, this is the 8x8 birdies and remember we used the flip side of the 8x8 birdies already here. Remember that? So that is taking both of our 8x8 eight eight birdies. Originally, I had put the flip side of the 8x8 eight eight birdies here also from the second pack. If you do not have a second pack, and I told you you don't need one, what you can do is go to the 12x12 12 12 and get the Christmas Carol. Now you may say, why not get the 12 by 12 of the birdies? Well, we're gonna be using the 12 by 12 of the flip side of the birdies in here. And we're going to be using the flip side of the 12 by 12 birdies, another strip somewhere else. So don't wanna use the 12 by 12 birdies. But what you can do is get this Christmas Carol, the 12 by 12 Christmas Carol. Cut a piece, this piece, you're going to cut it here. That will look fine. Especially when you put photos on it, you're not even gonna notice. Same thing on this side. You are going to be cutting this side of a Christmas Carol and you're going to be cutting it here. And that will look fine because remember you are just putting a photo in here anyway. So with this little strip you're not going to even notice what's on this paper. So that's number one. Cut your inner flaps using the 12 by 12 Christmas Carol. So far so good, make sure you ink the edges real well and that will look fine here and over here. These flowers are facing each other. That will look fine. This part doesn't change. You are still going to be adding your half an inch of solid green here, which is almost eight inches tall. I think it's seven and seven eighths or something. Yeah. That you're going to, on this, this flap, you are going to be adding your solid green a half an inch wide and you'll do a little bit of border strip of the black cardstock and then you will add your, your solid um, gold piece of paper. And that is going to be about four and three eighths. It depends on how much black you have left between the green and the gold, but it's around four and a little over four and a quarter. But you measure yours. Get the green in and the solid gold in. So you got your inner flap in using the 12 by 12 Christmas Carol. You got your green strip here on this flap and your gold piece here on this flap. Same thing on the other side. Then what you're going to do is cut, this is a, a one inch diameter circle. I have a die cut that has a little stitching. You're going to cut that 
you're going to cut this in half so you're going to get two pieces that look like that once you cut it in half where you're going to put these is important these should be centered in the middle originally I had mine a little bit farther down because um, I was just doing my center strips but Center these in the middle. Why is that important? Because we changed these magnets. We changed where we have our magnetic closure. The magnetic closure is going to be right above this little circle, which is right in the middle. Remember, this circle tells us you're going to open it up. So this magnetic closure is going to be butted up right against that circle. This one's going to be butted up right against the circle on the other side of it. That way our magnets do not interfere with each other and they do not interfere with the other magnet that is right in the middle, right in here. So that was my redesign of this portion. You do not, do not place your 12 by 12 piece that you cut out in yet. Save that, do not put this in because you need to put your, your little closure in underneath this paper so don't put that in until you get your closure in okay now this closure this closure is measuring four and a half inches long by one and a half inches wide so it's Part of it is going to be underneath this paper. So part of it is hiding underneath this paper. So, so far so good. You got your 12 by 12 from a Christmas Carol put, cut out, but you have not placed it on because you're going to await until you get this placed and this centered relative to this circle. So far so good. The way you do these edges is if you have, where's my memory keeper? If you have this memory keeper, this is going to be using the scallop. You're just going to cut it like that. To get that edge. If you don't have one of these just round the edge here that is fine it doesn't have to have this scallop design. You can just round the edge on top with your rounder. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Other thing, this paper that is covering the pocket it's, you do not put this paper on until you've got your magnet in. The magnet's going to go somewhere under here. So this paper, you can cut it. It's going. It's that um, beautiful paper from the um, Warm Wishes using the snowflakes. You're going to cut your piece. Do not put it on the pocket. Wait till you get your magnet in there because the magnet's going underneath this pocket. Then put this beautiful paper on. So you'll be measuring that. So far so good. I think the rest we can do, um, there's no problems. The rest of the tutorial I'll, I'll show you how to do this inner flap. But do not put the, this piece on the pocket till you get the magnet in. 
do not add this piece until you get the flap in. <laughs> And you're not going to get the flap in until you have this gold piece in with your half circle, where you're going to put that half circle in the middle, and then you're going to figure out where you're going to put this piece relative to, relative to where you put your half circle opening. I hope that makes sense. If it, if it doesn't... Um, just watch me do this again, or, or watch this little video explanation again. It should make sense. We just changed where we're putting the magnets and these flaps, and it's all relative to this little circle that's telling us we're going to be lifting this flap up. Don't put on this paper over the pocket. We've got to wait till your magnets are in. And then, of course, you'll be covering up your paper once you get your magnet in. And I hope that makes sense. So first thing you're going to do next to this flap, you're going to cut, get your green paper, make sure you get the orientation correct. If you're looking at that, I like mine, my pattern going in this direction. This is going to be one and a half inches wide, I believe. Let's see. Yes, one and a half inches wide. And then you just cut it to the proper length, a little less than eight inches. And you're going to adhere this here. Just make sure it's clear of the flap. Once you have that, then you will cut your gold paper. You don't want to cut the gold paper yet because it depends on uh, on your space in between this piece and this piece. Your space may be a little bit different than mine. So once you have this piece down, then you measure how much space you want in between. Not much, about like that. And then you will go ahead and cut this piece to the proper size. So I'm going to go ahead and here this one down and make sure you ink the edges. That's one thing I never forget. I never forget to ink my edges. I forget my magnets, but inking my edges for some reason I never forget. So I'm going to do that and then I will come back. Okay, so I laid down the green, measured my spacing and cut out my gold paper and inked it and put that one down. Haven't affixed the pocket yet, so if you haven't cut this out for your pocket, make sure you get that cut out, inked, and, and tape, or glue if you're gonna use it, but you're not gonna put that down yet. We have to put our magnets in. We have this side and this side matchy matchy now the only other thing this is here you can see it. this is a flap you need to, to fold over um, our pockets are here so it's hard to tell this needs to be opened if you're a recipient of this album and you don't really know much about mini albums a lot of times I'll put a little ribbon to indicate this is this needs to be opened, but I don't want to put a ribbon under right under here because this closure, the ribbon would add some more bulk under here and the magnet might not adhere as well. So what we're going to do, and I, I did this on Twas a Night Before Christmas album, those of you that saw it. So this was left over from the night before Christmas. I'm not going to use it here, I'm just going to demonstrate. This is just a, a circle punch. Actually, it's from my, it's a die. It's a, it's a circle die, and it's one inch in diameter. So what you do with these is you just get a one inch circle, and then you cut it in half. You just cut it in half. So you're gonna have two, two halves, and then you apply it like 
this right to the edge. So that's kind of like an indicator that this is an interactive element and you open this. So I cut this one, the green, that matches. So I'm going to be cutting this in half after I ink my edges and then, well, I'll cut it and then ink my edges. So I'll have two halves and then I'll apply one here and then I have one for this side also. So the little thing, little indicator to open the flap is right there. So make sure you line it flush with the black right here. So it's just a nice, your black line is nice and straight. And the way, so once you place one, then you just go to the other side. So when you place the other side, you just line them up, line the papers up. And then you have, then you just place the other one um, according to where this one is. So it, it's, they're, they're even. Well, we're doing another insert video. Um, because I hadn't placed this page yet when I originally made the the design, which I totally changed with these magnetic closures. But hopefully you've got your magnetic closures in once you have this round circle in. You know how to adhere this strip underneath the paper here. Make sure it reaches to where you want it to close going to transfer your magnet and then you will apply this designer paper. Then you will cover your little magnetic closures with a just a little circle round punch. I put the magnet underneath the red but then I covered it with the circle round punch for design element. Same thing with the back side here. I just added the green paper and put the magnet underneath the green paper and added a design element here. Now here, you can use the, the smaller magnets if you wish. I still put the large magnets in here just because I like the large magnets, but you can put the smaller basic gray magnets in. So you've got this, these magnets in. This has all been put in. The only thing left, you got your pocket now placed, the designer place, um, paper placed over your pocket because the magnet is now in. The only thing left is to do this piece. Now you are going to start with this designer paper, which is the black, just like this. This is three inches wide. This is three inches wide, it's a mirror image of this pocket, but it's, you're going to put that three inch strip on this side. Cut it, measure it, ink it, and put it in. And then the tutorial will pick up, the original tutorial will pick up with putting in this paper, which is from the 8x8, eight 8x8, by eight, eight by eight, which is from the 12x12. 12 12. This is the 12x12. 12 the birdies on the flip side of this. This is the 12 by 12. You, I will show you how to cut these and put them in. And the last piece is going to be the red. And it's just whatever's left, you're going to put a piece of red and you're gonna just tuck it underneath this pocket and that will complete this. This is basically an eight by eight inch spread here and you've got that fold right here. So hopefully that will make sense Will you when you see the last part of the tutorial when we add in this paper. But make sure you have your magnets in. You should have them in once you have this your circles in. So that's it for this, <laughs> this other insert video. Just your little half circle here so you know to turn the page. But what we didn't decorate was the inside. So the insides have their pockets 
here. So this is what you're going to do. You are going to get, go to the 12 by 12, get this paper, and what you're going to do is cut this side, it doesn't matter, you're just going to cut it in half, six inches, because 12 inch paper, cut it in half, six inches, so you're going to have two six inch pieces. Then these six inch pieces, I'll do just show you on this one, you're going to fit, this is this one, I, I've already cut it, this was six inches, but I fit this part over on this flap here. So you just measure it and then give yourself some space here because this is where it's going to be folding. So you're going to measure that and then cut it. I'm going to put that down. Make sure you, this one's real important that you ink those edges real well because it is kind of stark white, so you want to kind of add some dimension with that ink, on, especially this side. So you're gonna put this one down, and then with your other piece, you're going to lay it down over on this side. And then you'll get those two down. Once you have those two pieces down, you will get your red car stock. This is what I have left of one of my sheets. And you're going to figure out how much you need for your pocket. And I may need to cut into another sheet. Let's see. Oh, maybe not. That might just fit there. You're going to cut the red card stock to size, so you ha just have your little bit of black reveal here in between. So this page will look something oops, like, like this when it's done. So it will look like that when it's done. You're going to be doing the same thing with this side. You're going to be getting this six inch piece. You're going to measure it out here. You'll be cutting it here and then the second piece will go on this side and then your red cardstock will go in here. So you guys can do that on your own. Not too hard once you know what you're cutting. It's just a six inch piece. Six inch piece, your 12 inch paper, cut right in half, six inches go across from the pocket side. You're gonna cut the six inch, let's see. My, this one just for this side is about three inches right here. So there you go. So that, that would be it for this these center pages. Basically done with those, probably gonna do a little bit more decoration on here, but that will be at the very end. So I'm gonna do that and see you on the next one.